Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates to go over. We're gonna start though with the most recent physique update of Nick Walker. It was circling around the internet for a day or two, and it started a lot of discussion, and it was mainly about Nick's midsection and about vacuums in general, because Matt Jansen wrote a very triggering caption, and we're gonna talk about Nick Walker, his midsection, and his potential to do a vacuum, and what it would look like, but really, what nobody's talking about are his biceps in this photo, Nick's biceps. Before we get to his biceps, let's first talk about the vacuum. So Matt Jansen says jokingly, anti-vacuum, vacuum club. And really, like I know he's joking, but really, in all seriousness, if Nick Walker could somehow learn and manage to pull a vacuum, would it look better than abs flexed for him? I mean, he has these crazy thick abs, and even though his waist size isn't the smallest with those prominent and really good looking symmetrical abs, he really makes up for that blocky midsection. Now, if he tried to do a vacuum, you would probably imagine it looks something like this. Well, this is probably as deep as Nick's vacuum can go, and this was a couple of years ago. In the meantime, he grew even more, so I'm sure he can't even pull it this much. But as you can see, when he extends his midsection, his upper body, and he actually does a vacuum, he doesn't flex, his lats do pop out a little bit more, and of course, he stretches out the oblique, so his waist size does look smaller. However, the problem with that is the length of his legs. In this photo, you can't even notice this issue because he is not entirely in the photo. You would imagine that his legs would be longer, but really on stage, when he doesn't flex and shorten his torso, you can really see how stubby his legs are. It's been a while since we saw him do this on stage. She figured it out a long time ago that it's not the best look for him. But even though crunching the abs is the best way for him to show the muscularity of his midsection and to make his proportions the best possible, he is at the same time having trouble opening up and flaring out those lats. So that takes away from the V-taper and also crunching the abs contracts the oblique muscles and it's pushing them out. So this is definitely not the best way to hit this pose if he wants to have the smallest waist on stage and the best V-taper. So it's definitely a trade-off and I think he figured out what works best for him. Now here is a photoshop of Nick hitting a vacuum, what that would look like. I think it would look something like this if it was possible, but it's not possible. As you can see in this most recent physique update, Nick is kind of doing something in between. Of course, he is flexing the abs, but he's not crunching too much like he used to. He kind of learned to open up at the same time and also crunch the abs, not completely, but enough. And as his body fat percent goes lower, his abs are gonna be more prominent. But I do think he learned how to open up and not crunch too much. You know, he's not really pushing out his obliques. In this photo, actually, his waist looks pretty small compared to the width of his shoulders and his lats. So, I gotta say, this actually looks very good. It looks improved. Now, would he look better if he actually pulled a, a real vacuum, a deep vacuum like this one? I'm not even sure. I'm not saying this is possible, but I'm not even sure if it would look better on his physique, with his structure and his shape. And as far as is it possible, I don't think it is. Matt Jensen says anti-vacuum club, but really, if Nick could do it, maybe he would try it. However, I don't think there is a chance of Nick doing that, because this is what his stomach looks like when he's not trying. So his vacuum is basically his stomach being flat on stage, and that's about it. If you see Nick Walker with a flat midsection on stage, that means he's sucking that stomach in and trying super hard not to let it go. So that's his vacuum. And you know, this guy is not like Hyde Chopin or Derek Lunsford. He's not 230 or something like that on stage. This guy goes as high as 300 pounds in the off season. He competes at like, I don't know, 260, something like that. So that's extremely heavy. That's extremely big for a guy of his height. He's packing so much muscle, so of course, the insides must have grown too. You simply cannot get that big and keep your stomach as small as it was when you were 100 pounds lighter. And Nick is just so, so massive that I think there is not a chance 
of him ever pulling a proper vacuum, but again, I don't really think he needs it, he actually looks very good right here. Now, as far as the other thing that nobody talks about, it's Nick's biceps. I mean, look at that left bicep right here. What the hell is even happening to it? I mean, the triceps are hanging nicely, but the biceps, they are insane right now. They are so massive that, like, they are on the verge of being called suspicious biceps. I don't think he's doing anything to them. I think this guy simply has the freakiest bicep genetics of all time. I don't think his biceps look like uh, something has been done to them. Not that I'm an expert to notice that, but I just don't think so. I think these biceps are real muscle. But you never know. Maybe he's doing a little bit of something to it, uh, just enough that we can't notice. Who the hell knows? All I know is those biceps are looking absolutely insane right now. We'll see what this guy is gonna look like on stage in about 4-5 or five weeks at the New York Pro, but realistically, everybody else is fighting for second. Tony O'Burton, Quinton Araya, Regan Grimes, or Beef Stew, none of these guys can really go against Nick, they're all fighting for second. And I'm just assuming that those guys are maybe doing New York Pro, I do know that Beef Stew and Tony O'Burton are doing it, but as far as Quinton Araya, there is some talk that this guy might be doing New York Pro, but I don't know that for sure. He never really said that he's doing that, and I think this guy just wants to qualify for the Mr. Olympia, because last year he skipped the entire season to improve, to actually be able to qualify, and the year before that he tried and he failed, so I think he just wants to get on that stage finally, and competing at the New York Pro is probably not gonna help him in any way to get there sooner. So, I think he might be doing something later, like Tampa Pro, and Quinton is like one of the rare guys, a couple of guys, who are this tall, and this massive, and this aesthetic. So he's probably gonna have a bunch of short, blockier guys, with less uh, pleasing of a look, so... I don't know what to expect, I think anything is possible. Does he look like somebody who can qualify and go and compete at the Mr. Olympia right now? I think this physique should be up there. But is he gonna be able to qualify? That's a really tough question. That's an extremely tough question because there is a whole bunch of Olympians from last year who still did not qualify. There is a whole bunch of great guys that are gonna compete today and take away those qualification spots. So I don't know. I mean, even though Quinn does look very good, he needs to be extremely good this year to manage to find a pro show where there is none of those heavy hitters and he can somehow get the qualification. So, I think a lot of bodybuilders this year are gonna be disappointed and won't get to the Mr. Olympia stage because it's extremely difficult. There is no point system anymore and these guys, they're not competing very often. They choose one show or two shows and whatever happens, happens. And this is no longer the way to qualify. There is far too many great bodybuilders. Some of them want to compete as much as possible. Like Hadi just took away two spots and he was already qualified. You know, he won Arnold, both Arnolds and he didn't have to do those shows. So everybody else has less chances now. And these guys, like Quint, the newer guys, if they want to be up there, they need to do more shows and somehow get to that Mr. Olympia stage and probably not place inside of the top 10, but still just getting there these days is extremely difficult. And unless you try very, very hard, you're not gonna make it. As far as Quint, I think it's gonna depend on how lucky he is, how difficult of a lineup he has in the qualifier shows, because I don't know. I don't know if he can make it. I would love to see him up there, and I think once he is finally dialed in, he's gonna look even more impressive, and I love his physique, but again, it's gonna be extremely competitive this year. And finally, in this video, we got a new physique update, the most recent one, of Big Remy. Now, it's not really a physique update, he is in his clothes, but still, still we can see how massive he actually is, and in my eyes, he looks probably... I don't know, he hasn't been this big in a long time. I mean, yeah, he's got the angle, so he probably looks a little bit bigger than he really is, but still, I mean, he looks freaking gigantic here. Look at that freaking arm and that shoulder, and you guys know that he's doing a guest posing this year, so he's not doing that like some other bodybuilders who are obligated to do it. He is doing it because he wants to send us some sort of a message. 
And what message could it be? I think it is that he's coming back and he's coming back big. He's coming back bigger than ever. And if he's working with Patrick Tour, then you can be sure that Big Remy is gonna make progress. Will he be as, as fresh and as aesthetic as he was before all the injuries? I don't think so, no, I don't think that's possible. Even in this photo, you can kinda see his forearm. And it kinda looks a little bit atrophied. Also, I think his arms don't look, I mean, they are massive, because he's just overall big, but they don't look as full and as round as they looked back in the day when he was at his best, when he was young and fresh. So, I don't think it's gonna be the best version of Big Remy, but it might be a lot improved version and maybe potentially like the biggest, the heaviest. And if he gets conditioned as well, well, maybe then it could become like the best version of Big Remy, but just not the most aesthetic one. I don't know, we'll find out soon enough. But right now, Big Remy looks massive, really massive. And you guys tell me down below in the comment section, what do you think? What can Big Remy bring to the Mr. Olympia stage? And tell me your thoughts about whichever part of this video you found interesting. If you guys enjoyed it, like it. And if you want to see more content about bodybuilding on this channel, just please guys subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, see you soon, all the best and bye bye.